Hey there, I'm Lucas Bond with the Missouri Department of Conservation. And today on Habitat Hints, we're gonna talk about brood habitat. Oh, I'm actually at 25 Mile Prairie Conservation Area, just outside of Bolivar. And I'm here with MDC's Kyle Hedges, and he's gonna tell us a little bit about uh, brood habitat and how you can make really good brood habitat on your land if you're a landowner and how you can change that up to make that habitat great for you know those broods of turkeys or quail or, or other wildlife. Uh, let's let me turn this around and we'll start talking with Kyle and see how things go. Hey there Kyle we're talking brood habitat today so tell us what we have here we are a 25 mile prairie conservation area which this looks great right? Yep, this is a grassland site, so this is actually a native prairie, but even just on a planted grassland, we can, we can do the same management practices that we do here. And so I want to talk today about kind of ideal brood, what makes ideal brood habitat, whether it's for young turkeys or, or little quail chicks that are out and about. And this, you know, it's midsummer. This is when these things are, are hitting the landscape. So it takes some, some planning and preparation to make sure that you have the right brood habitat when the season, you can't wait till midsummer to try to implement it. We've got to think about these things during the rest of the year to have them in place when we need them. So was this burned this year? Yes, yeah, so the unit we're standing in was burned this year, which of course showy flowers, um, lots of things blooming. So that's critically important to, to have successful quality brood habitat in, in Missouri, we get quite a bit of rainfall normally. We're in a drought this year, mm -hmm. but normally we get quite a bit of rainfall and we get more grass than we want. What we want for brood habitat is lots of broadleaf weeds. So wildflowers, weeds, whatever you want to call them, those are actually good. They attract insects. And these young turkey poults and young quail chicks, they live almost exclusively on invertebrates during their uh, that growth stage mm -hmm. of, of up to about a month old. So. Super important to have a diversity of herbaceous plants, broadleaf weeds, so they can get all this diversity of insects. The other critical part is bare ground. So look down here, this space, when I say bare ground, I don't mean a dist up field, I mean this space between plants. Mm -hmm. That is critically important. Um, both turkey and quail chicks, from birth till two weeks old, they cannot thermal regulate, so they can't control their body temperature. So for one, they, they're little and they're trying to move around through stuff, but two, they gotta stay dry. If they get in a heavy dew or you know, some rain gets them wet and it's a cool, cool night, cool morning, 50 degrees in June say, and you have a real heavy dew and you get soaking wet, they get hypothermia and they die. So we need this space so they can move between plants and stay dry, but also the mobility to find those bugs and they're picking grasshoppers and leaf hoppers and all kinds of things. So that is critically important. And I'm gonna show you in just a second what it looks like when we don't have some type of disturbance. The disturbance can be burning, can be light grazing. Uh, there's other techniques in, in planted grasslands. We wouldn't wanna do it on a prairie like this, but we can do strip disking, uh, strip spraying. There's other ways to create this habitat. Now, this is, this is ideal right here, right now. Now, for landowners that are wanting to do something like this, to say to their, their land, how can they start by doing that? What would be the easiest and best way to do something like this? The cheapest, easiest way is fire. First of all, we need the right native plants in place. If you have non-native species like fescue or brome, you're never gonna get the, the broadleaf plants that we want. Those grow and form a mat. So first of all, we need to make sure we have native plants to start with. If you have non-natives, we can do a field conversion, get them into natives. The best way to do that <coughs> would be fire, but also to get some more information and insight, they can contact uh, the Department of Conservation at M and you can find your local private lands conservationist right on mdc.mo.gov and search in the search bar and just type in you know uh, land conversions you can type in you know uh, just just yeah. natives and stuff in general and find their local private lands conservationist absolutely we have very knowledgeable staff all across the state and they're well versed in in converting things from non-natives into natives um, they're well versed on uh, planting burns, helping you lay out where your fire line should be, um, how to execute a burn, 
depending on, you know, we can even write burn plans for you. Some of our private lands folks can, depending on if you're enrolled in a cost share practice and things like that. So here we are in an ideal, ideal field for brood habitat. Now, you were saying you're going to show us something that isn't yep. quite what you would recommend. Yep, we're going to step right across okay. the, the drive here, and I want to show you, you know, this is still native prairie. So this is, uh, this is stuff that's been here for thousands of years. Hundreds of different species of plants. And keep in mind, we were in a drought last year down here too. So this is actually, you know, a, a second year of drought. Yeah. So this you but, can see. But look down in here. It's heavy grass, yeah. a lot less wildflowers out here, and, a, and no bare ground. There is no room for, for chicks, for their feet to touch the ground. So in the case of quail, quail hatch out there the size of a bumblebee. Mm -hmm. So imagine a bird and they leave the nest immediately. They, they start moving around looking for, for food. They don't get fed in the nest like a robin or something. When they're this tall and you got little bitty legs, they can't crawl through this thick grass. It's just not possible. And this is un, unburned, this is what happens, or undisturbed. So we can't disturb it all every year because we need some areas for the birds to nest. But we needed to be disturbing a third to a half of our acres each year to create that ideal brood habitat. And the best way to do that would be prescribed fire, right? Prescribed fire is the easiest, cheapest way. Okay. But there is other methods for sure. Like I mentioned, we can do some light grazing or in planting situations, um, strip disking, what we call strip disking, where we lightly disk some areas, um, even some chemical control to reduce grass and increase broadleaf plants. All right, I really appreciate it, Kyle. And again, I'm gonna echo what he said earlier. If you would like to learn more about how you can get your land from looking this thick to looking more like ideal habitat on the other side that is perfect for brood habitat, please check out our website at mdc.mo.gov and search in the search bar brood habitat or type in uh, natives, type in um, private lands conservationists and you will be able to find your local private lands conservationist that can help you with this. Thanks and have a great rest of the day.